So let me go ahead and start the notes here. Um, I figured it would be easier for me to do it this way. Um, hopefully you're able to see all the notes and things and we're able to kind of do it somewhat quickly um, as opposed to me recording the class today. So um, we're going to complete the last set of notes that are in our classification packet. These are going to be your Carlos Linnaeus notes. Um, so go ahead and turn to that if you haven't already and grab a pencil and we'll get going. All right, he was born in 1707 to 1778. Um, he was born in Sweden, so he was a Swedish uh, scientist. He was son of a pastor, which is kind of interesting, uh, the story of how he got involved with plants, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. He is often called the father of classification, which we know now is because he is best known for coming up with binomial nomenclature system, which hopefully we know by now means the two main name system for all in things, which we know comes from the genus species name. So, if you don't know where Sweden is, um, I can't remember if you can see my uh, thing or not, but I think so. Up here in the northern part of Europe, um, so like down this way would be Germany, Poland, to the left would be France, a little bit lower would be Spain, England's also to the left across the North Sea there. But up here we have these three countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and together these make up Scandinavia. The middle country of that is Sweden. That's where he was from. Here's a couple examples um, of binomial nomenclature, the system that he developed. We have the Ursus Martinus, which is the scientific name for polar bear. Um, I asked the students during class uh, what is wrong with that first name there, and hopefully you should be able to tell me pretty quickly that the second word there, Martinus, is capitalized, and it should not be. We never capitalize the species name, only the genus name, so that needs to be fixed. But also notice that grizzly bear is the Ursus arctos horribilis. Um, so same genus name, different species name. Also notice that the other grizzly bear, the species name has two words, so that is possible as well. Then lastly, we have the scientific name for black bear, the Ursus americanus, probably coming from the fact that these are commonly found in America. Um, this part is actually not in your notes, they're just examples, so don't worry about writing these down unless you just want to off in the free space on the side there. Some more examples, we have the Equus cowboys. Um, the word equestrian, if you're familiar with that word, um, has to do with the sport of riding horses or jumping horses, having to do with um, sports and horses in some way. Um, so the Equus cowboys is just your basic horse. Then the Equus bertoli is the zebra. So again, we're seeing that same genus name, but different species. And then just because we need to know this, um, humans, our scientific name is Homo sapiens. So Homo being our genus name, sapiens being our species name. In his early life, um, Carl's father loved plants, and he would often put flowers on baby Carl's crib. He usually gave young Carl flowers to play with. One day when he was about four years old, the Linnaeus family was gathering flowers at a picnic with friends. His father told their guests what each flower was named. Um, back then, the names were a little more complicated. They were made up of many Latin words. Carl wanted to know the names, but he had a hard time remembering all of them because he was four, basically, and it's hard to remember all those long names. It was a little bit difficult, even for an older child, but let alone a four-year-old. So he kind of kept uh, bugging his father, saying, what's this one, Dad? What's this one? What's this one again? And um, his father eventually got tired of telling him the names of flowers over and over again. He told Carl that if he was not going to, he was not going to tell him the name of flowers if Carl was just going to forget them. And, but from then on, that was all Carl wanted to learn, and names became his passion. And from then on, Linnaeus loved plants and being outside pretty much his whole life. This helped him become a famous naturalist, which is um, someone who's an expert in natural history and life sciences. Basically, exactly like it sounds, an expert at nature. So Linnaeus was a wildlife expert. He went to college to become a doctor, though, which sounds kind of funny. If he was interested in plants, why wouldn't he go to college to study plants? But you also have to know that uh, many plants were used for medicine during his time. Uh, he was so smart when he went to college that he impressed his professors so much that he was actually asked to teach the classes in botany at the college. And he was only in his second year as a student 
And he was so successful as a teacher that 300 to 400 students would show up to hear one of his lectures. Here's some examples of the plants that he interacted with. We have um, foxglove, which can be used to strengthen cardiac contractility, meaning um, how strong or weak your heart contracts or squeezes. It can help regulate heart rhythm. Lavender, uh, again, if you're familiar with essential oils at all, these should be, most of these are pretty familiar to you, but lavender is maybe the most common type of um, natural medicine in our day to day. It can be used for multiple things. It can help prevent fainting, allay nausea, meaning if you feel kind of sick to your stomach, it can help kind of make the nausea go away. It's often used in therapeutic baths to reduce stress. It can lower blood pressure, and even a small amount can help with um, skin diseases like on topically, meaning like on the actual skin, like eczema, psoriasis, um, rashes, burns, things like that. Another example is rosemary, uh, scientific name is Rosemarinus officinalis. Rosemary has been used to treat headaches, epilepsy, which is a seizure condition, and even poor circulation. It can also be used as a disinfectant in the form of mouthwash and also help treat fevers. It is also important to stop dandruff, which is where the skin of your scalp gets really dry and itchy and starts to flake off. It even can help improve memory. And lastly, wintergreen, the scientific name being Pyrola minor. Wintergreen is known for its cooling properties, flavoring everything from mouthwash to gum. As a medicine, it can be used topically on wounds and even internally to aid in ulcers and retaining bladder. Uh, those are kind of like blisters basically on your internal organs. Um, pretty painful, can make you feel pretty sick. Um, and the plant also contains a natural antiseptic. So these kinds of plants and more are the sort of things that Carl was studying while in school. Um, I'll put that video at the end of the pod here. But so during to Lapland, um, notice on the map down here, Lapland is the northernmost part of Norway, Sweden, and Finland. So not Sweden itself is pretty far north and is pretty cold and icy. So going even further north than that is very, very cold and icy. So that was a lot of life living there. Um, but Carl traveled there in hopes to find new plants and animals and minerals. He was also curious about the native people, the people that lived there, wanted to know how they live, what they like, etc. So on that journey, he basically did like a nature expedition of sorts, collected thousands of insects, many shells and stones, more than 3,000 pressed flowers, and 30 different kinds of tame birds. He wrote a book called Flora Laponica, which is Latin for Flowers of Lapland. So basically went on this journey, cataloged everything he saw, and then came back and wrote a book about it. He did so well on this journey to Lapland and the catalog that he made after that that the governor of Darwana heard about it and asked Linnaeus to make a complete study of the natural history of Darwana. She was like, hey, I didn't, did, I didn't know that you did such a great, great, great job of Lapland. We can do the same thing for my country and make a natural history of our country. So Carl said yes and took seven students with him. And on horseback, which is extremely impressive, they recorded the samples of plants, animals, and minerals. The governor, in fact, was so impressed with how he did that he invited Linnaeus to teach his sons in Thalen, another area near there. While doing so, he met a woman named Sarah Lisa Murray and fell in love. However, it was a forbidden love of sorts because her father did not approve. Linnaeus came up to Holland to complete his degree. Uh, I'm assuming this is talking about completing his doctorate degree. Um, on the way there, though, he stopped in Hamburg, Germany. No, this is not where hamburgers are made, but it is a city or a spot in Germany. And when he got there, he was treated, he was treated like a celebrity. He had a ton of gained fame. Everybody knew who he was. Everybody was impressed with his work. And he uh, was kind of treated like a famous person. So, in trying to show off, Hamburg's mayor wanted to show Linnaeus his seven-headed dragon that he was going to sell. Basically, it was kind of like a, a fossilized remains of what he believed was a seven-headed dragon or some kind of proof that he, or like a, either a fossil, a fossil or a rock or fossils remains, some kind of something that was supposed to be proof that he had something of a seven-headed dragon. However, Linnaeus, being a naturalist and an expert in uh, all things nature, quickly told him that it was a fake. And then he had to leave Germany in a hurry because the mayor was not very happy about this. 
Um, now, Mayor Hamburg said to make quite a bit of money off that sale if it were actually true, but considering it was fake, now nobody wanted to purchase it. So Linnaeus had kind of foiled his plan there. When Carl got to Holland finally, he, took it, he turned in his thesis, which is like a big um, paper, basically lots of research, lots of writing on a certain topic. His thesis was on malaria, which is a type of disease you can get from uh, flying and mosquitoes, typically in more third world countries um, where there's more bacteria and things like that. Um, and then took an oral exam. He then defended his thesis in a public debate and earned his degree. Basically, um, after you write the thesis, you earn your degree, especially in a doctorate program, which is usually the highest level of study in a field. Um, you have to write your thesis and gather your facts and background and information, and then you stand before a panel of judges, and you have to defend your writing, defend your thought process, your, the facts that you found, etc. And if you defend it well enough with the right facts and background knowledge and evidence, then you are awarded your degree. And so he um, clearly did very well because he completed this in his first two weeks after arriving in Holland. Now, I don't know if he had had the paper written for a long time or what, but typically, in total, a doctorate degree takes about eight years nowadays to receive. I'm not sure, first of all, if it was a doctorate degree, if so, how long it took back then, but either way, this was an impressive accomplishment. So Summa Naturae, which you can probably guess is Latin for System of Nature, is Linnaeus' most famous work. In this book, he details his system for classifying plants. He revised it many times over many decades. His first edition that he published was around 14 pages, and then as he continued working and in, uh, investigating more, he kept adding more information to it. And by the 12th edition that he published, the whole book altogether was comprised of three different books in total 2,300 pages. In this book, you would see drawings similar to this, um, and you also see that Linnaeus classified his plants by counting the number of stamens. We'll learn in the spring uh, what stamens actually are and the purpose they serve for the flower, but for right now, all you need to know is that um, Linnaeus would group the flowers based on how many stamens they have. So, for example, in the top right picture, group P would contain all the flowers with one, two, three, four, five, six stamens. And then group O would contain all the flowers with one, two, three, four, five stamens. And then group N would contain all the flowers with one, two, three, four, five, a thousand different stamens. <laughs> or so it seems. Uh, later in his life, Linnaeus took a medical practice in Stockholm, which is uh, or three in Sweden, and eventually he dated to marry Sarah Lisa. I don't know how, what, how all that went down, but he did marry her. He then became a professor of medicine at Uppsala University, which I'm assuming is a university in Sweden, and became a professor of botany. However, this word botany is actually spelled wrong. It should be B-O-T-A-N-Y. Um, then Carl and then Sarah Lisa had six children together. And in 1762, Linnaeus was knighted by the king of Sweden and was known from then on as Carl von Linn. Uh, you have to understand, in American culture, when we want to honor someone nowadays, we give them, we, we award them either a medal of honor or a purple heart or which is another kind of military award or a Nobel Peace Prize, something like that. In the European culture, especially back in the day, in honoring someone, they would do that by knighting them. Now, it does not mean that they actually gave them armor and weapons and they went out and fought for their country like a Don Quixote or anything. Instead, it was more just a, like a title of nobility. Okay, they were honored in that special way and given a certain title. So, he was no longer known as Carlos Linnaeus, but he, went as, he was known as Carl von Linn. Then he died in 1778 at the age of 71, but Sweden still honors uh, this famous scientist uh, because to this day, at least as far as I know, um, Carl Linnaeus' face is printed on their 100 uh, money bill. So, uh, and this is obviously not a dollar, I don't know if it's Kronos or what it is, but just like we honor George Washington and uh, Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin, Abraham Lincoln, a couple of our other presidents on our money, um, they do the same thing for Carl Linnaeus. So he was quite an important guy, and he did start um, the system of classification. We have obviously updated it and improved it since then, but he was the first to create it. <laughs>